Hello, I'm Perry from Rennet and Rind. Nearly forgot where I was from there. It's been a long day. Um, yeah, so I'm here to talk to you about your Mystery Cheese Box Christmas edi Edition. So Mystery Cheese Box was started up in the COVID era where we really need to support our cheese makers and it's just gone strength to strength. But this year, and this box is extremely special because although I put loads of love and dedication in the cheese every month, Christmas is extra special because I know you're going to have family around the table and I really need to think about catering to other like flavor profiles, creating conversation, giving things that are a little bit challenging, some things. So hopefully I've achieved that brief and we'll find out afterwards what I think. I haven't tried the cheeses since we started wrapping. So I try and keep the, the experience as fresh for me as possible so I can give you a real experience, no editing. And yeah, it, it's been an amazing 2023 for us. Um, so those who do know me, you know all about my awards, and my work with Affinage. So these maturing rooms, this is where we brush and turn all our cheeses and look after them, cut them straight from dispatch so they're absolutely perfect for you. Um, and this year, I, I, last year, I became Britain's first ever Affineur of the Year. Um, and this year, I achieved it again with a lovely cheese, which was a Baron by God, which I, I matured in a Kefili style. So I'm, I'm the two-time Affineur of the Year who selected your cheese. Um, yeah, and we opened a shop in Stamford, which currently is extremely, extremely busy, which is amazing that people are loving British cheese, coming in, tasting it, come to see me, come see Mark, come see Jan. Um, so it's phenomenal. But um, that's enough about a year because you're eagerly awaiting to get into your cheese. So I just want to check that you've got everything. Obviously, you would have got it your box, and then in there would have been an envelope with a little kind of direction on how to eat your cheese, how to keep your cheese, a little kind of cover letter about what this experience is about and what we're trying to do, a little message from me. So you've got that, you've got your tasting notes. So if I'm going too fast for you or I'm annoying you, you can switch them off and go through these. You've got a pretty cool quiz. That's a little bit of fun. Quick fire on the back. A few questions in there that I may have just given you the answers for, so look out for that. And become your own cheese judge. So some of you may know I'm a world cheese judge. I judged in Norway this year, Trondheim. And um, you can become your own cheese judge. And they're the notes, the notes, the fun, just to create a little bit of after dinner, like fun that you, that, that, that you can have and really engage with these cheese because hopefully they inspire conversation. So let's get on to our first cheese. I know you're all very excited. So we have Baron by God Brie. So I know what everyone's thinking. The people who have had the box before, we had this last year. But let me be really frank with you. You guys want a Brie on your Christmas board and there's no better. Baron by God, which is made by Johnny and Dulcie Crickmore in Bungay, is just a phenomenal cheese and you know, I've got to give you the best. And when I was looking at all the other options, I'd have to create other flavors in other areas to make up for it. But it's just a phenomenal cheese. So this is a Brie de Meaux recipe, now pasteurized, used to be unpasteurized, hasn't affected the flavor actually, which is great. And it's just cool because it's got this really good set of mold. So on the top, you can see that white mold that's there, that penicillin, but you've got a little bit kind of like divity rind that's kind of wriggly, um, you know, and that that's a little bit of GI in there which is a nice yeast that kind of creates a nice sweet flavor we've gone for a profile which is like one and a half ish i know as i was cutting a lot of cheese some of these tipped ahead and we can note that by a little core in the middle little core is a lactic core so that's more fresh dairy milky area surrounded by this kind of savory unctuous flavor at room temperature about eight, nine degrees in here. So this is gonna to begin to run for you guys. Remember to get your cheese out 45 minutes before eating. And um, yeah, so, so I'm trying to go for a hybrid. First cheese up, nice and subtle, but with complexity for what we're gonna find ahead. So let's have a little, um, let me cut actually, let me cut a nice little sliver off. Cuts really, really well, really well. And you can see that paste that I was talking around the outside and a little kind of lactic core that's in there. So have a smell first. Mushroom, milk, little touch of cabbage, and maybe a little bit of yogurt, kind of like fresh yogurt, which is good. Good aroma, lovely cheese to start off with. 
kind of, I think this might be Britain's best cheese these days. It is just so great. Let's have a taste. Good, claggy texture. That core dissipates immediately. We haven't got any problems there. Um, um, milk, savory, cabbage. Nice lactic spring in the middle, which is good. So nice bit of kind of like yogurt. When I say lactic, like fresh grass in the middle. Loads of kind of like bit of creme fraiche. Nice savory finish. Mm. Touch of cottage cheese. God, really Morris, actually. Really Morris. Like, you can eat that for days. Mmm. And I think it's very cool that this is like Britain's best cheese. And I know some of you ordered it as well, separate to the mystery cheese box. But like I said, I want to give you the best brie. And to be honest, this one is the best. And there's a few people that I'm talking to at the moment, a few cheese makers, who I've really liked their brie. So maybe that might change next year. But this is a very cool Baron by God, pasteurized, Montbert Billiard cow's milk, traditional methods, beautiful pastures in the Waveney Valley. And that really comes through in that milk quality. And I'm really embracing that this year. So that's your first cheese up. Pause if you want to continue to consume. But it's so important that you eat them in order because they all do different things to one another. I'm just rest that on my notes. So next one up, controversial. Now... I love this cheese and I feel like everyone that I've met in the shop over the last couple of months really turns their nose up at this colored cheese. Red Leicester. Now Red Leicester has just been trashed. Red Leicester like that I taste in supermarkets is a young, bloody awful, mass-produced cheddar with food coloring in it. These guys are doing it the proper way, right? So you've got anato, that's what makes a color, a color, South American seed crushed down, popped in the milk. But you've got cl uh, cloth bound. A, this one's aged for 18 months. I'm gonna go more into why this one's very special later. Um, animal rennet, you know, and actually on racks, turning, turning real stuff. And it tastes completely different from any Red Leicester that you have. And I know we're missing a cheddar. I get it, I get it, and I know, but I really, really want to challenge every, we, we're selling a lot of these boxes. I want to challenge people's perception at Christmas to re-engage with a proper Red Leicester, which in my opinion, is only Spark and Ho. Spark and Ho is the only proper Red Leicester in the UK. It can't be protected the way it makes because they're saying unpasteurized, animal rennet, cloth bound, traditional methods, and the big manufacturers are saying two months Food coloring, doesn't matter, whatever. Um, but I really hope you guys enjoy this one. It's a nice splash of color on the board, but it's a really cool cheese. And the reason why it's so, so cool is because this cheese, about three years ago, a batch came around with a certain string of acidity that's in it. And a certain string of acidity means that I can bring it on for many more months in the maturing room. And that acidity gradually turns into a quite a really nice blended flavor. So around sort of just before June time, we got a batch in that had that note. So I put them to one side, looked after them, brushed them, turned them. And I think the profile was absolutely perfect. And I think you guys are really, really going to like it. So, um, so let's have a smell. Now near the rind, you're gonna get more must, more what these rooms smell of, more bacteria, microbes and microflora. That's more musty and real and how cheese should be. Um, but on the nose, you're gonna get some kind of lower pace, a little bit of nut, more cheddar-y kind of vibes that are in there. That's why I felt like I could plug this hole. I know I'm gonna be controversial, but I, like I said, I really wanna write the rule book of how we perceive Red Leicesters. So let's have a taste. They're phenomenal. You got that tang. So it's hitting me a little bit here, but not in an overzealous way. You've got this nice chew with a slight crumble. It comes together, moves apart. Nice savory. That acidity is continuing through the journey. Now we're getting a little bit of savory. Now we're getting cooking. That savoriness is just moving on the palate. Nice and gentle all the way through. Good, good degree of salt that's in there. Let's get it out of my pot. Nice aromatics at the end, a little bit more herbaceous kind of at the end. Little touch of lemon that's actually mixed in there. And then when it's off the palate, 
length. That's what artisan cheese does. It's not just one and done and you're consuming, consuming, consuming because you're chasing that cheap flavor that's up front and massive. You know, still tasting it now in waves. Really beautiful cheese and I really wanted to pay homage to it this year and I hope you guys enjoy it. Sparkano Red Leicester, proper Red Leicester. Next up, beautiful packaging by the way, thanks to our wrappers. I was part of the wrapping team this year. Not as much as the other guys, admittedly. But um, if there's any dodgy wrapping going on, you can blame it on me. They're superb. So shout out to Mark Field, Adrian, Mike, Duncan, Dom, Callum, who are all part of the cutting and wrapping team this year. We did a phenomenal job, even though we had a record-breaking amount of cuts to do. So this is Morton, and specifically Perry Wash Morton. Now, you may be thinking, I'm Perry. What does that mean? No, Perry is a form of alcohol. So we've been working quite closely with David Jowett and the Cotswolds. He makes amazing cheese and makes one called Morton, which is like a Tom de Savoie style. And we had conversations about washing the cheese. He makes an amazing cheese, which is called Yarlington, collaboration with Salaman Sam. And we thought, how, you know, I need this springy-like texture in my box. How can we make a little twist, an exclusive, something that never, no one's ever had before. We thought the Morton is up for it. I'm so glad we did. So you've got this beautiful kind of wash rind, this peachy rind, which is perfect by the way, in coloring in terms of wash rind. Not that you may be into the coverage of wash rinds, but I am perfectly washed. Um, and it just provides this kind of, see how I cut through it there? This kind of slightly, not in a bad way, rubbery, pliant texture that's a little bit more claggy that we're not going to find on the other cheeses. Aroma, very lactic. So very kind of sour cream. That's where we are on the aroma. Near the rind, more pungent. The brave ones will do that. We're getting gym socks. We're getting a wash rind cheese, yeah? But in a subtle way, we've got intermixed penicillium in there, which is nice. So let's have a taste. So springy, easy going, palate cleanser, little bit of herbaceous, touch of savory. Mmm, really like easy going. This is like the person on the table, right? Remember I'm thinking of all those different profiles on the table. That's not particularly into cheese, doesn't like the power, but appreciates some nuance. And I think this is a really nuanced cheese. And one that you can just eat, think about, sessionable. Mm. Nice like degree of length, not too crazy. Doesn't bounce around, doesn't overcomplicate the palate. And a nice like note in there that's kind of like burnt toast. Kind of like chicory kind of like bitterness, but in a really subtle way. And I know saying bitter is going to turn people off, but I think it's a nice dimension to have in our board. Tonic -y. Tonic, yeah. Morton, peri-washed, alcohol, not me. I don't, I don't know what that means. So this one's controversial as well. For years, I have steered away from a proper goat's cheese within the box. I've steered away from it and steered away from it. And I thought this year, do you know what? Those people at the table are real goat lovers. I'm going to make them very, very happy. So I think Driftwood, which made by Roger Longman down in uh, Somerset, um, showcases our kind of secret weapon. Now, what everyone thinks goat's cheese is like this really unusual, um, like grilled, grilled goat's cheese in the 90s that was on every bloody salad in the world, and it was really goaty and horrible. So everyone in the UK from that kind of continental massacre of goat's cheese either loves it or hates it. But goat's cheese is our secret weapon in Britain. You know, we make some really clean goat's cheese. And the cheese makers have worked out, do you know what? This isn't like a, a space that people like that much. So let's tone down that, I'm going to say it, goatee, goatee flavor. And people laugh when I say it, but people know precisely what I'm talking about. I could go around the houses and say warmed milk, hey. But it's goatee. Um, so driftwood is covered in an ash on the outside. They used to do that years ago, a little bit of educational lesson. So like in the mountains, you make your hard cheese as you come down, because they survive the longest, the most robust. Your ferns coming down to the softs and right at the end, the goat, because they had the shortest shelf life and were the most fragile. 
And when they get to the market, they will be bashed up, remember, cobbled roads, and they sprinkle a little bit of ash on the top, and that's why they started doing it. Now it's more of a pH controller, actually really levels out the milk in a nice way. So as cutting it, we've got this real dense, thick texture. And this is like modeled on like a St. Moore, typical Loire Valley goat cheese. Um, aroma, a little bit of goat. We're gonna get warm milk, like I'm saying, grassy, a little bit floral, and a touch of soap, okay? So I don't think this is gonna be the prevailing factor, but um, we know we're eating a goat. And that, just like, look at that texture. It is such a beautiful cheese to have on your board. And I hope loads of people give this a go and they might discover they like goat's cheese and they find more goats to, to kind of, to kind of um, enjoy. So let's have a taste. I'm gonna go for this bit, big bit. Texture's cool. Like, that like coats the palate. Shouldn't go for such a big <laughs> Plaggy. Really sticks. Got this kind of like real thick set, you know, milkiness to it. So subtle. Lemon is there. Floral is there, like we said. And that goat factor, lovely lemon, moves into like a citrus as well. Just get it out of your mind if you don't like goat, because that is delicious. Really great to have this like textural difference, this flavor difference. Long, because it's so plaggy, it keeps on coming back because it's in the areas of the mouth still remaining. Driftwood. Thermized milk. Thermized milk is uh, slowly cooking the milk instead of aggressively pasteurizing it. So you're still getting some of that provenance from the milk that's in there. Re I think that's delicious. I think that's re a real accessible goat cheese for everyone. And I hope you all give it a go. And I hope you all enjoy it. And I challenge some perceptions and I create some conversations. So Driftwood, I'm running out of space. I gave you so much cheese. Next one up. The most popular request to come back this year. Once a year, <clears throat> we made this spin last year. I feel like I always need to give you truffle at Christmas. I know it might divide opinion, but it's a little bit of special, a little bit of expense, a little bit of treat yourself. It's an expensive thing to do. And I love this play on proper Wensley down. Now we do your down, uh, which is cloth bound, age for three to four months, um, you know, really natural way. And it's how Wednesday Downs should taste. Everyone's used to those horrible vac packs and they just taste like citrus. Now people are really embracing our heritage. Wednesday Downs is one of the oldest cheeses made in the country, made by Sistine monks. So, um, so yeah, I, I made this last year. And the difference is, is that we put Rather than, you know, a manufactured Wednesday Dow, you make them in big blocks, you grind them up. And as you grind them up, you put cranberries in there, you put ginger in there, you put whatever that the people want to sell you in there. But at make, we actually put truffle in with the curd. So you're maturing the cheese with the truffle, which is really, really important. And as you're maturing that cheese through, you're getting some... Uh, like not as a, an aggressive flavor that's in there. It's got this beautiful rind on the outside. Here they are. I've moved them over here in my videoing space, just so you can have a look at them. So nice coverage, a little bit kind of like mushroomy that's on there. Aroma, now truffle, right? Very, very Wednesday Dow and truffle, which I really, really like. Not just a, a, an assault on the forces. And the truffle is really aromatic. I know people have different sensitivities to truffle, but on the round, this is really, really light, which is good. Let's cut that off there and let's chop that bit off. So textural difference, Wednesday Dow, crumble. We haven't had that yet. Let's have a taste. I mean, that's lovely. I love truffle. Really big kind of that citrus note that you expect from a Wednesday Dow. Crumble is nice, that's slightly drying, will make you, make you reach for another gulp of your glass of wine, which is precisely what you want when you're enjoying your Christmas dinner. Truffle, it's just a back note. It's like a background singer. You've got the Wednesday Dow, which is a great cheese, just sort of doing, you know, the Mariah Carey at the front. At the back, you've got a backup dancer, singers. 
that truffle, truffle, just helping it on, providing that bit of complexity and intrigue. And this was like our most requested cheese. I had so many emails saying, are you going to do it again? Are you going to make it again? Are you going to do Wednesday truffle? Are you going to do Wednesday Dow? I haven't really known what to name it. And um, I was like, yeah, it's, it's great. And it's great that people are requesting it. So, you know, I think the favorite one each year maybe I'll bring back, like for sure. Um, and yeah, everyone loves when I make this. So I, I really hope you enjoy this one. It's special, little bit of truffle. It's a cool cheese. Wednesday down truffle. Wednesday down. Wednesday truff. Truffle down. Working that out. Last and not least, you've come to the end of your time with me, and we're gonna we're gonna leave on a bit of a bang, because I'm secretly, not secretly, actually quite openly, love blue cheese. And there was a time about two years ago when we put in the box of cheese. I think it was called Young Buck. I think it was well, it was definitely Young Buck. I can't remember if it was, if it was in the Christmas box or whatever, but it was like the best blue I've ever had. It was an amazing profile, unpasteurized cow's milk, Northern Ireland. And I think we've topped it. Pevensey we've been working with for about a year, made by Martin and Hazel, really lovely people. Like, it was so nice. And this is the thing about this box as well, if you haven't got bored of me talking. These are all artisan people. Right. Martin Hazel, got David Jow with Morton, we've got Roger with Driftwood, the Clark family, with the Red Leicester, Johnny and Dulcie Crickmore with Baron. You know, there's, they're all artisans. They're British families. They're real people. They're not faceless corporations. They care. And when I put the order in for the Pevensey, I was like, I think we've nailed the little subtle changes that we want to make to it in the maturing room. And I think, you know, the way it's coming out, I think people will really enjoy it. And the last couple of months, it's just been amazing. It's been amazing. It, it literally comes from the guys. They're ready to go. It's very, very kind of oozy at that point. We dry it out just to touch, just to make the texture a little bit more fudgy. And yeah, I think this is the best blue I've, I've ever had, the Pevensey, at this time of the year. Um, and I'm just in love with it. Uh, I just think it's fantastic. So Gorgonzola style, meant to be. In the maturing rooms, Lower humidity, gradually drying it out, getting it more and more fudgy on text. You can see it's a little bit firmer. But that fudge, I mean, the knife, I'll do it this way actually, just glides through the cheese. Let's see, literally next to no crumble. Stands up on its own, which is great. No kind of runniness that you're getting there, which is good for Christmas cheese because you're going to be storing, opening, re-eating. So let's have a look at the aroma. Big and bombastic. This cheese is bombastic. It's like high, you know, fruity, berry, and then a touch of savory, a bit of beef in the back, good saltiness. Okay, let's have a taste. The texture is unbelievable. The texture, it like hits the palate and like evaporates immediately. It hurts, first of all. You know, you're like, it's like everything going on. All the things I spoke about, the tang's in there, the savouriness is in there, you know, it's all happening at once. And then it like transcends. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very into this cheese. It lifts off and all those lines begin to separate out. The acidity is very clear and like very sharp at the moment. And then that savoury, that beef is just bumbling along that aromatic, that perfume mess that you get from the blue is just delicious. And then when it leaves it your palate, you get this kind of note that descends into a, a kind of beef gravy reduction. Then like beef stock after a couple of hours, then just bovril. <laughs> Incredible. And it... It's like one of those that makes your eyes water a little bit. But there is so much going on. You don't need too much of it because it's massive. I think bombastic is the best phrase ever for it. And it's just an utterly delicious cheese. And I love to finish on that. And I really hope you guys enjoy it and embrace, embrace that blue. So I think the blue lovers out there are going to be like, Perry did me a solid this year. <laughs> he did me a solid. So... um. 
So those are your six cheeses for your Christmas edition. Now, thank you guys for your support. Over the years, you've supported us. We've opened a shop. We've won awards. We're selling more British artisan cheese than ever. And it's just phenomenal the amount of support that you guys have given us. And you're going online, leaving these amazing reviews, which is kind of like, like the lifeblood of an independent company because people get a true insight to our customer service and like our attention to detail. And they're real because they're from you. They're not from me telling, I think our cheese is great. Um, so yeah, that uh, really thank you because we opened a shop and it's been phenomenal and we're going to keep on going, keep on maturing, keep on supporting British artisan cheese. I hope we're all learning something together um, as our business grows. And um, I truly wish this you know, it's a big, it's a lot of pressure for me to put these cheeses together. I hold the cheese board at Christmas really, really close to my heart, as you can imagine. Um, and, and I really fret about this and hope that I tick the right boxes to create some conversation, to try something new, to try something amazing and really encompass the, the table. And um, yeah, I really hope you enjoy it. So that's me signing off for 2023. I'll see you in 2024 with our mystery cheese box. Have a Merry Christmas, and I hope you enjoy the cheese and enjoy the time with your family. Thank you. Bye-bye.